I've been to Newfoundland a couple times doing what I do for a living and uh, both of them were in the summer months. I've only ever heard stories about how awesome Newfoundland is in the winter and how the riding is unlike anything you can get anywhere else. So while we were here in the summer, these guys just kept telling us over and over and over about how you got to come back in the winter, got to come back in the winter. It's amazing. And, and at the end of the last trip when I was here, I said, look guys, like, let's make this happen. Let, let's get us out here this winter and let's prove to me how great it is and prove to me you're telling the truth. So sure enough, you know, we, we get the phone call this year from Craig from Rugged Edge, who's sort of our hookup here, it seems. He's kind of our guy on the ground. Called us up and said, guys, the Federation wants you guys to come out here, wants you to promote the area. And uh, I'm here, I'm gonna hook you up with the stuff you need, the equipment. Let's get out, let's do some snowmobiling in Newfoundland. This past summer, many times during your visit, you know, you'll be quite surprised to see the difference, how, how the view and scenery would look uh, in the wintertime versus summer. And again, we invited uh, Luke and Vern from Snow Tracks, and uh, we spent a few days snowmobiling here in Newfoundland. This is Luke's uh, evening attire. This is what he wears at Prey Snowmobile. So a little twist to this story. Last season's North America's top snowmobiler winner, Dustin Boyd, was going to join us on this trip because he's from Newfoundland. He's from not too far from here. Never met Dustin before. AJ had told me he was a great guy. So it was great opportunity for me to get to know him better and, and to go for a spin with him. Day one, our ride was going to be limited to a smaller group. Uh, so we had Dustin, Luke, myself, and, and Craig. Craig was, uh, Craig was leading the charge and, and guiding us that day. So on our first day with uh, Luke and Vernon Newfoundland, we decided uh, we would attempt to make it into the Lewis Hills, show them around what we had in, in, right on the west coast to offer for snowmobiling. That day, the weather wasn't quite in our favor, so we left. We, we traveled to the top of Myrtle Mountain, and I could show them in the distance where we had planned to travel that day and where we would travel over the next few days while Luke and Vern were here in Newfoundland. The skies can open up to just actually a beautiful day like we're having today. And then it can close back in depending on how far up in elevation you go. As we got back up towards more of the area that we're going to be riding, which is Lewis Hill, the weather started to move in a little bit. We got a little bit more socked in with, with, uh, with some uh, weather. It wasn't going to take away from the experience we were going to have that day. There was lots of amazing zones that we were able to find. One of the great things about Newfoundland uh, snowmobiling is that we offer a wide variety of terrain and riding of condition for the customer that decides to come here or snowmobile one of his, that wants to visit Newfoundland. If someone wants to visit Newfoundland to go snowmobiling, we've got two options. You can either take a truck or your car and, and, and take the ferry across from North Sydney to Port of Basque. Your other option would be to fly. If you come on the boat and want to bring your own snowmobiles, you can. If not, if you want to fly to Newfoundland, there's lots of places that, we, that can rent and offer tours. Here, here in Newfoundland, you can basically go anywhere you want. As adventurous as you are, you can take yourself anywhere, right? So, uh, you know, when, when the snow conditions are low, that's a great opportunity to just pick through the trees, go to places that maybe people haven't been yet. In Newfoundland, we, you know, we got extreme backcountry riders. We got guys like going out, just, they love going out and cut wood. You get people going ice fishing, you know, it's just a, it's a great way to get, to get outside and, and enjoy the outdoors needs to be understood about this trip and it's unfortunate but it didn't it didn't change anything is that the snow conditions weren't what they normally are but the reality was once we got out there yeah there wasn't as much snow but that didn't take away from how spectacular this area was If you applied the snow conditions from last year to this area, this very well might be the coolest off-trail area I've ever seen in my life. We found some pockets of snow, we found some spots to go play, Dustin and I got stuck, Vern got stuck, everybody got stuck and had a great time. It goes right into a creek, yeah. and it's the flat light, yeah. I hit it. Yeah. I landed right on the handlebars. See, I finally opened up my eyes. And I saw me coming back to life. One of the things that provided probably the best opportunity for not only some good riding, but some, some good entertainment was some of the tree riding. So, Vern. How's it going? Pretty good. Dustin! 
You're looking good until you hit the tree. I oh, know, let's look down here. <laughs> uh, one thing I can say is the trees are kind of inviting here. <laughs> Oh, it looks great, right? But, uh, you know, you go in, you bounce off a couple spruce trees, and then you find yourself in a, in a tree hole, and you kind of got to decide if you're going to dig out or if you're going to dig a hole in the state for tonight, right? 45 minutes to a half hour ride to ride in Steep Hill. Our elevation's over 2,000 feet. You know, riding at sea level, you don't have to worry about the elevation. Snowmills work really well. And again, all it did was solidify in my mind that if the snow conditions were normal, this place would be unreal. And you'd need a three inch paddle. You'd go nowhere if you didn't have the full jam mountain sled, giving us a great reason to come back. So I guess we're gonna have to come back to Newfoundland again next winter and experience Lewis Hills in deep snow. We managed to have quite a few stocks and getting tugged with some trees and some ski poles. Uh, no doubt, even though the guys all had their helmets on, I could see they were you know, definitely grinning from ear to ear inside their helmet. As usually happens when you have a group of guys who just love to rip, you just can't keep people contained. As soon as we hit this open area, man, we just shot off in three directions at full throttle. And it's great to do it here because there's no avalanche danger. Normally when you do that in the mountains, you have to be very careful. It's not, it's not safe to go up by yourself in case something bad happens. Here, there's no avalanche is gonna happen. The worst thing that's gonna happen, you're gonna get stuck and someone will have to follow your tracks to find you. That's, and that did happen. <laughs> Epic fail. I'd have to say the, the, the Stuck Award would have gone to Dustin for the day though. I mean, uh, he, he buried himself. He, he almost basically created a little uh, shelter for himself. He had to dig so far down. You know, you could have stayed home in St. John's yeah. if you wanted to make a snow fort. No. <laughs> they keep putting trees in the way, man. Oh know. boy, this is Mother Nature. These are trees. Right. This is what top snowmobilers do. No, this is what they try. <laughs> and you're the one that's going through the trees and, and getting stuck, you know? You don't want to do it every 10 minutes, but a uh, couple times a day, you know, people are always happy to jump in and poke a little fun at you while you're, while you're getting on stuff. Luke and Vern and Dustin definitely took advantage of, uh, you know, all of our bogs and bowls, our tree areas. We still had a great day. We did not get to the highest point, but we did have a great day showing them, you know, our little, our little secret jams are in place that we'd like to play here in Newfoundland. It's easy when you're having so much fun riding off trail to forget to eat. But here in Newfoundland, they won't let you forget to eat. Craig and the boys all had a plan for us for lunch while we were out riding. These, around here, they have these warm-up shelters. And we've had warm-up shelters where I'm from in the past, but never anything like this. And they're not just small little shacks. These are really, really well-constructed almost look like cottages to tell you the truth from from the trail side and within every, every warming shelter they've got a wood stove you can fire up they got pans that you can make use of and it, it's a great little area to sort of do a cook up craig had uh, promised us that he was going to do another boil up experience one thing that he said that we're going to be able to enjoy this time was some some fresh cooked moose craig never disappoints us when it comes to to eating he treated us to some of the best moose stew i think i've ever had and uh, it was great to sort of sit down and enjoy that uh, after a good day's ride. We still had a bit of a, uh, a ride to get back home, but um, we were able to make use of the great trail system that the, that the boys of the Federation have developed here, and uh, we made it back home in no time. It's, it's kind of eye-opening and to see how much work goes into maintaining the trail system and how much passion the people in the Snowmobile Federation have, it's great, you know, it, it really makes me feel happy to be a Newfoundlander and, and just to see how, how much passion these guys have. When we were done at the warming hut, it was getting dark, so it was time to head back. Not only that, but I was exhausted at this point. It was great to have a place to go back to that was as nice as the Appalachian Chalets, which is where we were staying. Uh, you know, you open the door and you're just greeted to a warm environment. It felt just like being at home. Well-appointed cabins that are brand new to spend a wicked day getting tired and wearing yourself out. What a spot to be able to come back to, to just recoup and relax. And Newfoundland's known for that as well. Food, riding, accommodations.
The plan for our second day riding here in Newfoundland was to stick mostly to trails, but in a different area down sort of along the edges of the Grossmore National Park, there's a really cool snowmobile destination down there called the Jack Ladder. This is like the hub of snowmobiling for this part of Newfoundland. Everybody comes here. I gotta say, Jeff, the owner of Jack Ladders, got it all figured out from a snowmobile perspective. He's got gas, he's got food, he's got lodging, beautiful cabins. When you walk in the cabin, it's one of the coolest features. He actually has a drying closet. Put your gear in the closet, crank up the heat and all that stuff. In the morning, your gear is perfectly dry, toasty warm. Jack Ladders got it figured out for people that are, are diehard snowmobilers. They definitely take care of your needs. The second day, we met up with Bob and Tony from the Newfoundland Snowmobile Federation and bring the guys down to Grossmore, let them see some area in Woody Point. Watching dirt tracks in the summertime, it made me realize that, hey, this would be great if we could get the guys from snow tracks there this winter and, and show them what we have to offer. I mean, and their whole viewing audience would be able to see Newfoundland and, and what we can showcase when it comes to being a snowmobiler. It has been excellent to be able to bring Luke and Vern in and showcase the province and what we have to offer here for snowmobiling. So leaving the jack ladder, we headed down towards Woody Point, had the opportunity to go through a small section of Grossmore National Park. There are some avenues in that in the, in the park that you can access with snowmobiles. The park is very limited, but I mean, it does give you the opportunity. In uh, the last couple of years, we've tried to operate more closely with tourism operators. There's a number of organizations that we try to work fairly close with, and this is really developing the snowmobile industry here in Newfoundland. We think that it has a huge potential for growth. So much to offer here, we believe that it's not available anywhere else. Newfoundlanders were always notorious for being very proud of where they come from, you know. It's uh, normally humble people, we're very accommodating. We love snowmobiling, we love the outdoors, we have a lot to offer. It's easy to see that a lot of tour guides are, are becoming operational, a lot of hotels. People are really starting to gear their businesses towards the snowmobiling industry. Uh, the Newfoundland Labrador Snowmobile Federation operates approximately 3,500 kilometers of trails right across the island from St. Anthony to Clarenville to the St. George's area. Our plan was to uh, meet up with Terry Young, uh, Greg Pike and Greg Osmond, all from the Woody Point area and explore the trails down there. So on the trail ride, we're gonna be meeting up with a couple other folks to sort of uh, show us along the way to Woody Point. And uh, one of them was Terry with Fawn Bay Recreation and the other one was Greg from Arctic Quest. And these guys own uh, two dealerships that are literally about a kilometer apart. Most dealers work together. They offer assistance to each other. As far as it goes, approximately, there's always a dealer nearby, so you would never have to worry about traveling hours to the dealer. If you came here and had a mechanical issue, there's always a dealer. You would usually want a half hour, 45 minutes apart. Probably the most impressive thing about the trails here is the scenery. As we were coming around this one hill, it was this really, really steep hill we were climbing up, all of a sudden the whole vista opened up, and there was the bay. It almost took my breath away. It was like, whoa, where did that come from? The trail going out to Woody Point was breathtaking see some of the beautiful scenery that I've, me as a Newfoundlander, have never seen in my own backyard. It was absolutely beautiful. In my uh, position with the Newfoundland Labrador Snow Federation, I've uh, got to travel around and I've met a lot of people that are involved in the snowmobile industry. And quite often they don't realize how easy it is to get to Newfoundland and what we have to offer. And the scenery here in Newfoundland, I think is unparalleled anywhere else in Canada or the United States. And I gotta tell you, it was absolutely spectacular. You can't experience snowmobiling in Newfoundland without being able to, to go out to an area like that. This is what you can experience almost anywhere in the province. And I think that, that was really, really cool to be able to sort of experience that in Newfoundland. It's not just about trails here. The trails are why we come. If, if you don't have good trails, I don't want to ride there. But the trails here are complemented by unreal scenery, unreal views and vistas. And that's just, I just don't think you can duplicate that anywhere else in the world.
I was coming along the, the, the trail. Uh, our destination was uh, Woody Point to be able to go down to a, a smaller restaurant called uh, Merchant Warehouse, where they were gonna fire up the grills and in fryers and treat us to a, a great Newfoundland lunch. We had lunch at, at this place called Merchant Warehouse in Woody Point. It's only technically open in the summer. If you call her, she will open up in the winter for you as a snowmobile. She'll come in just to make you lunch. Hey Luke, this is uh, Greg Osmond, who's mayor of Woody uh, Point. Greg, I live pleasure to meet you. You as well. This is Bert. Hi Bert, how you doing? Greg, pleasure to meet you. Yeah, I'm the mayor because uh, you really can't get anybody to take a job, right? So, uh, <laughs> so. If you're in Newfoundland, the one thing you have to have is you have to have fish and chips. And when, when they say fish in Newfoundland, they need cod. And when you eat cod in Newfoundland, it's some of the best fish that you're ever gonna experience. And uh, just the hospitality overall uh, for this province is incredible. From the folks that you meet on the trail, through to the people at the lodges, through to the people at the restaurants, they're always there with open arms welcoming you. And you're never gonna find a better place, I can honestly say in the world, because we've traveled a lot, where people are more welcoming and accommodating and, and lovely than the people of Newfoundland. You know, what I found really interesting is after speaking with Bob and Tony from the Federation, is that this province has about 3,500 kilometers of trails, and this goes province-wide. But what is unique about Newfoundland, pretty much anywhere in the province, you can go and ride. The 3,500 kilometers of trails that they have are basically just sort of like little access points that allow you to sort of gain access to some awesome backcountry. Maybe it's just to some awesome vistas. So within Newfoundland and our trail network, I mean, our trail network runs through a, a variety of different country and, and different landscape. And I mean, it just gives you access, like play all day in the snow and there's nothing better in the evening. When you come back out and it's getting dark and you're tired, to get out on the trail and say, wow, this is groomed, it's smooth. I'm gonna have a nice ride home. Each club puts in literally thousands and thousands of hours every year in doing trail maintenance, in putting up signage, and making sure that our visitors, that our people are using the trails, it's safe, they have a great experience. It was, it was great to come out and see that, that aspect of riding. Well, normally, me and my friends, if we come to the west coast of Newfoundland, we, we basically dedicate our time to backcountry riding. But being able to see those beautiful trails and how comfortable it is and how accommodating everybody is and just how nice it is, uh, I'm definitely going to spend more time dedicated to trail riding, bring my family out. When we finished our trail ride day, we ended up back, obviously, at, at Jack Ladder at our cabin, unloaded our stuff, got changed, got cleaned up, and then went into Jack Ladder to have some food. For our last night here in Newfoundland uh, at the Jack Ladder, we were told that we were going to experience an authentic kitchen party. What is a kitchen party? Where everyone sort of comes together, they bring out food that you can share, you toast for a great day, enjoy the bevies, enjoy the conversations and all stuff. Dustin, he wants to say he made a bit of a mistake by telling me that he plays the guitar and the mandolin. I went over to, uh, to Jeff and I said, listen, if you're looking for someone that knows how to play, you got to ask Dustin to get up on the stage. Dustin, happily obliged, got up on stage, and I got to tell you, he didn't disappoint. He was amazing. He gets up there and plays a whole set off the top of his head, no plans, just out of his memory. It's ridiculous. It was the best time. It was so good. People in the bar were having a ball. They, they loved that this random dude got up on stage and was entertaining them. Yeah, she says, baby. I thought he was North American's next stop snowmobiler. He's the American Idol. The one thing that I've learned is that when you come to Newfoundland, set your expectations high because they will over deliver on almost everything. As in the past, we've showed you lots of different landscape and scenery, and you guys got to take in. The most thing I'm proud of was our hospitality. I think it's the hospitality, friends. You guys came here, you made friends with many more Newfoundlanders. Judging by the comments that I, that I heard yesterday and the, the giggles and laughs and the and the old wows, uh, I, I think you guys will be back, which is, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It was a great end to a great trip. You couldn't ask for a better experience overall from the off-trail riding we did, the on-trail riding that we did, the people we met, the places we stayed. Everything about this trip was, as Vern put it, well above any kind of expectations you might have. It's one I'm gonna remember forever, and it's one I'm gonna try and duplicate again next year when snow conditions are a little more normal and I can get even more stuck.
If you like what you've just seen, click the subscribe button and comment below. And make sure you check out all of our great videos on Snowtracks TV's YouTube channel.